Welcome to the free class on how to trade the open and how to determine which way a stock is going to move. Um, thank you for attending. These are my ideas. This is not financial advice, so please use these ideas at your own risk. But let me let me make this chart here a little bit bigger. And I'm going to start out on the one minute chart. And then we can go down to a 15 second if we need to. But the first thing anyone in the room listening needs to understand is what forms a trend. And it's as simple as an uptrend is a low, a high, a higher low, and a higher high. Very, very simple but let's go through how that looks on a chart. For me, I'm very visual, so when I'm trading, I will often take my um, trend lines and mark it out on the chart. So a couple of people had messaged me and said, you know, I get killed at the open and I don't really understand what's going on. And, and that's very, very normal for a new trader. It feels very chaotic, <clears throat> it feels very fast, but that's just because, well, first it does. It does tend to move quite a bit faster, but a lot of it is because you just don't have the familiarity in determining what creates trend. So, and we'll go through several different stocks so you can see, but here's Amazon, big gapper today. But what we see out of the gate, we have a little pullback candle, which every morning I go over on my setups. If there's a big gap, I want to see some kind of a pullback first. So with Amazon today, all it had was that one little pullback and then it was pretty much off to the races. But what you need to do, and I would suggest that you literally go through your charts as boring as it might be, and why is this not cloning? There we go. And just start marking this out so you can see it. So if we just said that an uptrend is a low, a high, a higher low, and a higher high, we start out with a low here on the one minute and a high. The next candle we can see does in fact have a higher low, right? Right here, but you'll notice it does not have a higher high. So we don't have a definitive uptrend yet. For me, I trade Amazon a ton. So I'd be comfortable taking it off the body and going long here. If you are not comfortable, that is perfectly normal. And as a new trader, I would rather that you sit and wait and I'll show you, you know, what that looks like in just a second. But we don't get a higher high until this candle right here, correct? Can everyone see that? We get a low, a high, a higher low. We don't get a higher high until there. So as a new trader, you have no entry into a long trade until you get above the wick of this candle. So in theory, you could take it when this candle breaks that wick and goes, you know, my, I use white candles, you probably use um, green and red. So as soon as this candle goes green, you could take that. The only issue is if you're trading options, what are my cardinal rules? And I swear every time I violate it, I end up being really upset with myself. You need to wait for what I call a TTO back to trend. So in this case, yes, we have our definitive up definitive uptrend, but there is no triangle day out yet. So I sit on my hands and I wait. And the first triangle day out comes here. And so what I need to wait for is a strat signal back my way to get into that trade. So that strat signal comes and trading options and knowing Amazon like I do, I don't wait for the wick, I am not advising you that that's the safer way to do it. That is how I do it. As a new trader, the safest thing to do though is to wait 
for this wick. And as soon as you see that candle go green above that wick, that is where you pull the trigger. This is how you get into a TTO without having it go against you. And we'll see what that looks like in just a second here. So you get in, it goes your way. Now on this one minute chart, I can tell you right now, a lot of you would be, would stop out right here. And, and that's okay, because in all honesty, let's say this candle, what did this go from 3201 all the way up to, if you stayed in here, 3214. So that's, you know, between these two candles and this one candle alone is almost 12 points. I mean, some stocks don't move that much in a day. So in terms of playing a stock like this, realistically your stop should go on the break of trend and or i'm sorry your stop would go right here below the candle you get into but in terms of what would stop you out of the trade completely because obviously this trade's a winner you don't end up getting knocked out of it you're going to get stopped out when there is a break in trend now i've been trading long enough to know this is nothing more than a typical retracement. In other words, stocks most of the time do not move up in a straight line. They, there have been some exceptions to the point I've never seen before in the history of man this past year where I've seen stocks go straight up with no TTOs almost. But that is not the normal way that stocks move. What they will typically do is move in a direction and come back down and do what I call a retracement, which is what you see going on here. As long as that retracement isn't significantly more than 50% of the previous move, you're still in that, that trend. But as a new trader, especially with options, you're probably not gonna be equipped to hold through that. So there's nothing wrong with having your trend line and when that trend line breaks, you know, right here, getting out. You can always re-enter on this TTO and take that up, okay? So questions about what I have said so far. And like I said, feel free to unmute yourself if need be. Uh, <clears throat> if I take two examples today, right? One is this, which had a, this bigger gap and went only so much. Mm -hmm. If you see FB, FB, which had a gap, came down pretty significantly. And, and, then and what's the symbol, hon? What's the symbol? Facebook. Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, let me get it. So, mm -hmm. always the confusion is how to figure out when the retracement or when the bottom will be. When the bottom so will be, tough. yeah, oh yeah, understand. For the morning, five, 10 minutes. Yep, so how do we figure out a bottom? Well, once again, it goes back to when is Facebook making a low, a high, a higher low, and a higher high? And so when I'm looking at this chart, what I see here is a low, a high, a higher low, and a higher high, right? Okay. Then, once I see that it's starting to form this uptrend, what is my next rule? My next rule is I have to wait for it to do a TTO back to trend. And so... Right. But if mm -hmm. you put the high, 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 low thing, if you see the previous pickup, like at 940-ish, uh, that is also kind of higher, high, higher, low, right? Oh, over here? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? The previous about? one. Yeah. Well... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not right because we've got a low a high a lower high and a lower low oh yes okay very okay. subtle you almost have to put those lines up to see it you really really do and as a new trader because i still do i mean when i'm looking at a chart i'll throw the line up there sometimes you'll get a situation where it's so subtle at least for my eyes, unless I put the dang line there, I just can't see it. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. But this, okay. this system really, really works. 
It really does. That That is what forms a trend. So, and it keeps you out of trouble, right? That The rule of letting it form trend and then waiting for a TTO. So that would keep you from this right here. Do you see what I mean? Okay. Because some systems advocate that you jump in as soon as it, you know, maybe they would say jump in as soon as it breaks here to the upside. Uh-uh. I always want to wait for it to then do a TTO, okay? And okay. that sort of ensures your safety in the trade, if you will. There are times, I will warn you, that by waiting, you may miss an entry into a trade because maybe it does just take off. And the thing you need to understand is that is okay because there is always another entry into the trade. I think one of the things as human beings that we struggle with is this feeling that if we missed an entry, you know, then we start doing this, oh no, I missed it. We do this whole thing in our heads and that really detracts from our ability to find the next entry. And I guarantee you it exists. If it doesn't, it's a very odd circumstance and it just means the universe is telling you that trade wasn't for you because I would rather have a system I follow that works nine times out of 10 and protects my capital than be ticked off about one out of 10 trades that I missed because you know I didn't wait for my entry. It, it goes back to as silly as this sounds, having what I call an abundance mindset. An abundance mindset tells us there is always another trade. There's always another opportunity. We don't need to beat ourselves up, okay? The more you do that as a trader, the worse you're gonna perform. You're already gonna be beaten up enough by all the other things that go on. Don't, don't let that be one of them if you can help it. And so here's Something we see um, this trend line, it's not perfect because we had this little break here, but this was the perfect opportunity for you to get in. And you really, what you're doing is taking the strat signal off trend. So you've got a 222 reversal on the one minute back up. Doesn't mean you have to now manage your trade on the one minute by any means. If you get nervous with all of these movements around, then switch to a five minute. The reason that I like the one minute is, well, there's several reasons, but one of them is, let's say I was trading Facebook and I see it come back right here to trend. That's, that's a buying opportunity. Rob always says, add to your winners. Well, how do you do that? The way you do it properly is to wait for a TTO back to trend and a strat signal off the trend. So here we get a two, one, two reversal and I'm in right above that one candle on this little doji. And my stop can even go right below that doji candle. Sorry, I'm turning this off. Um, and that's how I keep my stops really tight too. But for people that get nervous, you know, that's where you go on a five minute chart, for instance. If that helps you stay in the trade, then that's what you should do. And you will still get those TTO opportunities. It's just a little bit harder maybe to keep your stops quite as tight because your, the candles are bigger, bigger and so forth. But you'll see that trend line I drew, it, it breaks in the same area, both on the one and yeah. the five minute chart. But looking at, you know, Facebook out of the gate, let's go back to that one minute chart because we're talking about how do you establish your trend at the open. What we see here is we have a high, a low, a lower high, a lower low. So if you were trying to take this short, your entry, this at one point, this candle ran all the way up here, right? Let me remove these drawings just draw this trend here. So your entry into this trade, if you were trying to go short, would have been here, 
because this candle came up against this candle and then in the minute you see it start failing, boom, you get, get in. This ride isn't quite as smooth back down and you probably, especially if you were trading at options, would have needed to add on this candle back as well. You'll see that none of these candles violated your trend line. Not until we get to this guy. Whoop. That candle yeah. will stop you out. But that's really get in the habit. And, and I say this to myself all the time in my head. You know, did it, did it, if it's a downtrend, did we make a high, a low, a lower high, a lower low? If we didn't, and if it's, you know, a real choppy stock, uh, did anyone trade something that was real choppy at the open that we should look at? Because that, that gets people sometimes. I'm trying to think if there was anything. I... This morning I thought Apple was choppy. Apple was pre market. Choppy. Okay, let's look at it. No, during pre market, during but pre -market. when it opened, it just went, okay, it just went off. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, that, that was a beauty today, huh? She finally made a move. Yeah. Um, I, I just took it off from my watch list as seeing it a little choppy during the pre-market. So I just gave it away. Did you? <laughs> I can <didn't> take later. <laughs> it's all right. It happens. You know, there's no perfection in trading. That's that's for sure. So actually, this is not a choppy pre-market. That is an absolutely oh, okay. gorgeous pre-market. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Why? Okay, what are you reading? <laughs> um, see this all this is I, I think i have a video somewhere on consolidation and why it's your friend when you see this where it's just holding a level it's holding this bottom level and it's holding this top level and that's what 25 cents or so wait what is this 128 50 to 128 yeah 22 cents or something oh, wow okay it you can't get a prettier pre-market chart than that. Why? Look what happened. <laughs> That's what it's telling you. When it's not doing anything, it is telling you, I am getting myself ready for a massive move in a direction. Got and it. more specifically, when you've got it holding like this 128.45 level, it's telling you most likely it's a long because see, it kept trying. Let me make this bigger. It kept trying to bust through the downside here several times and couldn't mm. do it. You can also see on pre-market that going into the up and well, I guess this is a little wonky, but we did have a low, a high, a higher high and a higher low. Do you see that? Yeah. Low, a high. Higher, low. Higher, high. Right before, and then a quick little pull. That that is a. I, I mean it. That that's like chart porn. I mean it's just gorgeous. You cannot get a better pre market setup than that. But if you don't know that, and no one's explained it to you, you wouldn't have any way of knowing that. But if you see yeah, something a... like that again. Oh, I know. Start jumping up and down. And really, yeah. this is what I do. And Scotty knows this because we've talked a lot. I draw a box around when I see this where price looks like it's going nowhere. I draw a box. And then when price breaks that box, and here's your strat signal too, right? 2-2 two -two reversal. Mm -hmm. Boom. You're in the trade. Does that make sense? And there was a small TTO as well. Yes. And here's and if you're not comfortable doing that out of the gate, which most new traders are not going to be, here's your small little TTO right here. As soon as it, and I, like I said, I use the body, but the safer way is over the wick. So you get your 2 to reversal, boom, you're in the trade. And then you see a little pullback. Did it come down even 50%? Nope. Apple's so strong, it does it it comes down hardly even a quarter of the way and it mm -hmm. just takes off. That I mean, that is like a stunning pretty chart right there. It really is. In terms of 
you know, how you would manage that trade. Let's look at Apple on a five minute. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, I got too many lines. Let me just get rid of them so we can do, do, do. So you may have stopped out of the trade there if you drew your trend line. And quite honestly, that's okay because if you're trading options, unless you intended to hold it overnight, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But um, if you're trading, you, do you trade stock or options? I can't remember. Options. Options, yeah. So this, unless you're holding overnight, can really like chop up some of your gains. So for me personally, unless I'm holding overnight, yeah. and you would have had to do several ads in here just to keep your theta decay from messing up your trade. Mm -hmm. There you go. You stop out right there. You're good to go. And if she sets up like that again tomorrow, you're going to be very lucky and get another chance. You know, if, if your pre-market looks kind of like it did today, could be mm -hmm. another fantastic day. Okay. D DKNG is a bit choppy, somebody's saying. So let's take a look at that. DKNG. I'm just going to turn, now we can keep pre-market on because we can talk a little bit about that. So, yeah, these candles right here, why is my little box not working? That's a little crazy. <laughs> we get it, we get a nice fail. So had you gotten into this, you know, on a strat signal, the 2-2 the two -two reversal back down, that's 53 down to 52, so good point. But boy, you would have needed to get out. How do you know where to get out with something like this? You can use either the volume profile or before I even knew about the volume profile, I would just simply draw lines on my pre-market like that. So I knew if I took a trade out of the gate where my uh, target was because these quick trades at the gate aren't going to necessarily re relate back to the daily chart, which is what I typically will use after that first move out of the open. That first move out of the open for me, I'm just looking for a quick scalp to make some money unless there's a reason looking at the daily chart that you know tells me I need to play it a certain way. Let's just see how that gap looks too. Okay. So here's what's interesting about this gap. Do you see that? It comes back down and taps this level. If you look left, happens yeah. all the time. I mean, it, it's when you're a new trader, this is how I felt when I was a new trader. I felt like I was reading hieroglyphics like Egyptian hieroglyphics on a pyramid somewhere and I didn't have the key code for what any of this meant I had no flipping clue and I would sit there and stare at charts and none of it made sense and it drove me bonkers you know it really did and what what I hope to teach you you know over time because clearly we can't do it all in one night is not only how to read strat signals, but how to read the story that the stocks are telling you. And an integral part of that does happen to be understanding how trend is formed. And I'm even gonna put DKNG back on a one minute so we can really see that chop. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's kind of ugly, isn't it? So what we would see here and let's just go through this, is first we got our first candle. Boom. Boom. So out of the gate, we've got, and actually I think that, yeah, is it a, let me make this bigger so everyone can see it. We've got our first high and our first low. So. That's what we're gonna measure off of. Let's see what it does next. So then we've got a slightly lower low and a lower high. So it looks like we're gonna be making some kind of 
downtrend possibly, only we notice that this next candle doesn't have a lower low. Instead, it's got a higher low. So, so far we don't have enough information. Then we go and we get a higher high. All right, still not enough information because we don't have a definitive higher low or low high, higher low, higher high, and we don't have a definitive high, low, lower high, lower low. So we keep waiting. And literally talk to yourself when you're watching these trades. We keep waiting, we keep waiting, keep waiting. What's going on, what's going on? Here's our, our high. Here's our most recent low. Here's our lower high. Still don't have a lower low. We don't have a lower low until here. So whoever said it's choppy, yeah, that's choppy. That's not something you wanna trade necessarily. So yes, we've got a downtrend. Then I need to wait for a triangle day out. Here's my triangle day out. Whoop, I don't want a text box. Cause it's going back against me, right? What? I'm being very cooperative here, training view. Why is it doing this? Okay, so I'm just gonna draw a trend line down. Okay, so here's our triangle day out. Where do I get in? Well, I get in on a strat signal. So I've got a one, two reversal my way. I get in as soon as that candle goes back my way. My stop goes right here above the wick and I'm in the trade. So let's see where we go. We go, we go, we go. And I do change my trend lines. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. Because you do need to adjust them. You know, they'll move very cleanly and then they'll kind of shift. So when I get to this and the trade is still working, and I'm just going to draw my trend line like this, I may see, okay, now it just took a dive in my direction. I'm probably going to draw a trend line like this. Because when you get a big push like that your way, especially with options, you don't want to allow something like that to go against you. So what, what you want to do is take your trade off on a push candle your way. So one of these big black candles, if you're short, you want to just exit your trade most likely. Uh, because you've had, let's go back here. You've had, that's probably not a huge trade. If we got in here, what is that? 52 down to, what was it? 53, I'm sorry, down to about 50. So you got about a point out of it. And your target, this is where I start tying back to the daily. So let's just look at the daily chart for DraftKings. And this is why I always have the daily up because as I'm watching things move along, I want to see, you know, what, what my target is. So let's just see where that corresponds. So if I'm trading this, I'm looking left and I'm noticing that this level, which happens to be the close from a candle, I don't know, a week or so ago, January 8th, is where it's getting close to. I'm going to take that daily line and I'm going to sync it to my one minute chart. Whoop, not one month. And that's how I know where my exit point is, regardless. So those kind of things are very easy for me to figure out because my, my trading chart, when I have the main stock up, is going to look something like this. Or I've got a five minute, I got my really fast time frame here and I have the daily right here because I can easily look at this and say, okay, where on the daily is that likely to come down to? And I could see that level and I sink it back. And then I'm also drawing my trend line right here. And I see this big white candle come along and this hammer at the bottom, I'm out. 
What questions do you have? That was a lot of information pretty quick. So what questions do you guys have on that? But when, when you recognize that something is choppy and it doesn't make sense to you, the reason is that it doesn't make sense. <laughs> so sit on your hands. If it feels overwhelming, it is overwhelming. Trust your gut on that and just stay out of it. I used to, you know, when I first started trading, I would do this thing where I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I get involved with these stupid trades when I felt overwhelmed and that was just dumb. I mean, when you look at it and you can see it's choppy, just chill, sit on your hands. It will form a trend at some point. There will be a better trade. And this is where, you know, even though you don't need it, let me just throw this up here because it can, it can help a newer trader it's not letting me copy. I mean, in all honesty, I could I could trade the chart without any of this stuff because I can read price action and I know what it's doing. But and DK and G to be all to be honest, say that's that is really really choppy. I mean, you can still trade it, but it's really really choppy. I'm just gonna show you a difference. You know, on a chart like this, see, even if you had waited all day and didn't trade it, see how right here we get a situation where this happens to be the nine moving average and this is the 21. The 21 exponential moving average is like a moving trend line. So if you're a newer trader and it's hard for you to draw lines and watch price action, I mean, there's there's a boatload of information that you're processing all at once. And as a new trader, your brain needs to get used to processing all of that at once. I mean, it really does take some time. So if it's hard for you to sit there and draw trend lines while you're trying to watch price action and strat signals and everything else. This can serve as your moving, um, moving target. And Amazon was so strong today, it really hardly even touched the 21 day. It stayed pretty much on the nine. But when you see a cross like this, that's your indication that a long setting up and you've got a low, a high, a higher low and a higher high, you gotta wait for that TTO back to trend. In this case, it's off the nine because Amazon's so strong right here. Whoop, there's my trend line. And you really, really can't get much prettier than that. So your stop can go there, but that's your strat signal off of the trend line here, 2-2 two, two reversal to get in into the trade and then you just ride it up until it starts to come down and fail through that 21 day. And my criteria for failing is effectively two closes outside of the 21 day. What will happen a lot is you'll get one close, panic sell and it comes right back. In this case, had you gotten out of that trade right there, that would have been a decent exit because you can see that it, it did turn around and you you would also know that boy Amazon's been running the entire day you know for me if I had traded that last leg I probably would have gotten out on the break of the nine EMA there or two black candles, you know, going through because we're at the end of the day and it's made such a huge run already. But that's kind of the lazy man's trend line or the new trader trend line if it's just, you know, too hard for you to draw those lines in the beginning, which I know for me it was. Uh, it's just too much information. Questions on everything I just said there that because that's once again, I know that's a lot of info. Did any were there any good shorts today? I didn't. I, I was doing 72 other things in addition to trading, so I didn't 
really get to watch a whole heck of a lot. What other stocks did you guys trade that you'd like some help with? And if you don't have anything, what I'll do is walk you through some of the different candles too. Because um, there's things, characteristics of each candle that I think are kind of important to know. So let me, let me just talk to you a little bit about this candle right here. This big, white, bullish engulfing candle. This is a very special candle. Why is it special? Um, see how the bottom on it is flat? What that means, when you see a candle in either direction that is virtually flat on the bottom, that means that in this case, because it's bullish, there really weren't any sellers here. Buyers jumped in right from the get-go and drove that thing up really quickly. So a couple things to note is when you see a massive candle like that, oftentimes a few candles later, you're going to see exactly what happens here. This, this shaved bottom candle, as I call it, also serves almost like a, a level of support. So it's no wonder that, though this is a little bit below that candle, it's in the general vicinity, it's no wonder that price comes back down and touches that. In fact, you can expect that being that if we look at this series of candles, the strongest candle here is at the top of this little series up. So when you see a massive push like that and it's at the top of the range, and how do you know it's at the top of the range? Well, there's a couple tells. And let me remove these drawings. One of them is the body on this candle is tiny. And after this big candle, you'll see that that candle in and of itself came halfway back down the body and then tried to explode higher and couldn't. I mean, it did get slightly higher, but it certainly wasn't two of these guys in a row. And then you'll see that these next several candles kept trying to push, kept trying to push and couldn't. That indicates that we're probably getting ready for a pullback. And once again, this is nothing to get concerned about. This is what stocks do in an uptrend. They're going to come back down and test. They're going to come back down and test. If you analyze a chart, and this is again why the one minute, even if you don't trade it, is good to study because you can see example, 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 example. Here it does it again, you know, makes... Chops around, makes a nice big push, comes back down. Well, where does it come down to? See how price kept kind of testing this level, this area? It's very normal for it to come down and do that. And it was also just slightly more than 50% of the previous range. Then it does the same thing, comes back. I mean, this, this is just the way that stocks move. I know when I first started trading, no one had told me that the pulling back action was normal. I, I really didn't know. I honestly thought when you were in a trade, it was supposed to always look like this, like candles. And if you get lucky enough to get one of those, God bless. I mean, those, those kinds of trades are amazing, especially with options. But it's not... The most common thing you're gonna find more of the natural movement which is up pull back 50 percent up pull back 50 percent i mean here it does it again Whoop. why isn't that over and over and over just look at charts that's it. and it does it on the day it does it on any time frame i don't care and this is how knowing that can help you on the daily time frame too so you know, kind of trying to target where where stocks are going to go and where they come back to, studying how that daily chart is working on the stock that you're trading. And you'll notice something that happens a lot is a stock will test the lows and highs from the previous day. Now, this is, this is 
somewhat unusual. I mean, these two candles are almost identical, but different colors, right? So one's a bearish candle, one's a bullish. It really, that's like an inside day almost, meaning price didn't go anywhere. I mean, it sort of did, right? Because one closed at the bottom and one closed at the top, but net net, not a lot of advancement of price. Going through charts and just looking at how these candles move, you know, asking yourself, okay, this candle, how did it relate to the previous, so on and so forth. Another exercise I used to do is put a candle right here and say, okay, what do I think the next candle will do? And just slowly go through a chart like that, especially in the daily, which is your bigger time frame. Extremely helpful to building your knowledge over time. But let's let's look at a couple other types of candles. So here's a spinning top doji. This is spinning top ish doji. And doji's doji is just a fancy name for a wicky type of candle. A spinning top doji means it has a small body right in the center of that candle. Dojis to me are thinking candles. It's a pause where price is trying to figure out what it wants to do next. So if we go back to that pre-market Apple chart, that whole area of the 25 cent range pre-market that just went nowhere, that's like one giant doji where price is trying to figure out what it wants to do. And very similar to these types of, of thinking candles. Um, something that Rob taught me that I really didn't get and now I see it everywhere is this, uh, cooperate with me, this shooter counters hammer or hammer counter shooter. Sometimes it's one way, sometimes it's the other. That, that pattern is everywhere. There it is. There it is. I mean, this this is a hammer counter shooter, but then we have a shooter counters hammer. That's kind of like a doji pattern in that, or an inside eight, meaning price is trying to figure out what it is doing. So here it's signaling actually a reversal the next day. Price goes up and then it takes a break and says, okay, do I really wanna go up? What do we wanna do here? And when we're starting to form a trend and you see a shooter counters hammer, I don't really care what color it is, but that's often just, just a pause before it gets going. And you can see here on this chart, that's exactly what happened. So it took a little break and then it took one day that was even more of a little break and then boom, off to the races. The, the area in which a candle appears related to the other candles is critical. So here we've got a shooter candle that in the right type of lineup could signify, you know, Rob calls them Momo hammers, but we'll notice that this particular candle is at the top of the range. So we've had a nice little run. A shooter candle at the top of the range, especially a bearish one, and bearish meaning, you know, it's red or black, depending on what color scheme you're using, can often indicate that a reversal is coming. And this, these things I'm telling you work on any time frame. It doesn't matter if it's the one minute or the five minute or the hourly or whatever it is you like to trade. But we see it at the top of the range and that's exactly what happened. Price turns around and comes back down. And most traders are familiar with a hammer type candle at the bottom of a range indicating that we're about to reverse to the upside. And that's what we get here. I, I usually like to see that the body is a little smaller, but there's no, I guess, precise way to measure that. So this hammer, what does price do? Comes, turns back around. Um, we see a hammer here. To the point where these types of candles, other traders are looking at them and what they signify. So even if 
someone who traded that hammer was looking for magnitude maybe back up to here. It didn't get there, but we still had a nice run to here. There's such strong candles, and at the bottom of a declining pattern, you'll often see they signify at least a bounce, if not, you know, a real nice run. Questions on, on that? I'm just kind of rambling because I've got so much information, obviously, in my head. Don't be shy. Who else has got some questions or another stock that they want to go through in terms of determining trend at the open? Nothing? Scotty, you don't have anything? You still here? Hey, Jan. Yeah. Um, you can go back to Facebook. Yeah, for sure. What? Yeah, so I think you mentioned your entry would have been, I think, what, a 1210? Yeah, and you know what? Your mic, I can hear you, but it's really, really soft. I'm going to turn it up. Awesome. Usually it's really loud. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, get it back to really loud. <laughs> okay, is it better? <laughs> yeah, that's better. Thank you. I can do louder, but that's like 50%. Better. Yeah, that's good. So you, you mentioned that your ideal entry is boat... 1210 I think it was right about minute. here oh there okay. yes yeah. mm -hmm. well that's what I was thinking yeah yep. okay yep and Be and where would you have added okay perfect so what I would have done is drawn my trend line like this and I add on the TTOs so yeah. you'll notice trend changes a little bit so initially if I've been drawing my line it might have looked something like that because we don't know this part of the chart exists yet, right? Mm -hmm. And this is on the one minute, and we'll flip to a five minute too, because not not everyone enjoys the one minute. Um, I was just trained on it, so I'm very comfortable with it. And, it, and it's great for ads. So I add every time it comes back toward trend, but goes my way. In other words, Here's my little strat signal, 2-2 two, two back to the upside after this little decline. Mm -hmm. And the reason I do that, I struggled. I, I could see as an options trader that ads were really important, especially after a decline. But the guy I learned from had this really goofy way of doing things, and I was never comfortable with with it and he would have us add to losers and the thing is he had a two million dollar account so with that size account you can bust yourself out of any trade <laughs> you have enough money to buy your way out right definitely so most of us are not in that boat so i struggle for the longest time like there has to be an easy way and then when i started learning the strat i'm like wait a minute the strat signals work on the higher time frames. That's what I'm taking my trades off the daily based on, but they also work on lower time frames. So why can't I take a strat signal off of trend after a little TTO and have that keep me in the trade? And then I'm protecting myself from adding to something that keeps going down. Mm -hmm. So what I came up with is I wait for something to get close to trend. It won't always hit it perfectly, right? Like this one doesn't quite get there. Sometimes it might go slightly beyond, but not trigger your stop. But here I've got my 2-2 two -two reversal. So I'm adding as soon as, and again with options, price on these things moves really fast. So I'm adding as soon as it breaks the body and pops up. That's how I'm getting in. And then, and then I, you're moving your stop underneath that pivot? Yes. And then I would move pivot. my stop probably, I wouldn't move it right there because mm -hmm. there are times where you'll get in that I'll turn back around and keep coming down. It doesn't happen too often, but there's times that it does happen, but it won't break that trend line. So if your stop's right there, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. So maybe I would move my stop here about 50% up that last move mm -hmm. just in the event it wants to come down because that's very very common for a stock to come back and test a 
move come back 50% yeah. to test that that is just the way stocks move and if you or don't 30, or 38 to or yeah 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 50 yeah. 38 50, you know if you get less than a 50 boy that's that's super easy to to hold and sometimes you'll get a you know 70 some odd retracement and it's still fine and it's still bullish but that's that's just normal and if you can't get used to that, you might be in the wrong business because that's mm -hmm. just what stocks do 90% yeah. of the time. I, I wish they always went straight up, right? But they just don't. Well, that's what happened to me with Facebook today. I think my stops were too tight on, on a day like today. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, tell yeah. me about what you did. Walk me through it. Uh, well, <laughs> I think I overtraded. I mean, I was in earlier than that than that point okay and i did I try to add about the um 11 of, i think when let's see let me go look at my chart yeah and don't you guys please don't be shy about sharing don't think i'm gonna think you're stupid i'm not okay i guarantee you everything you've ever done i've done it times 70. i mean there's so many guys who are who've been trading a much shorter time than than I have been who are killing it already. So they're already, you know, despite whatever mistakes, they're way ahead of where I ever was at the, the same time in, so to speak. And we're all human beings. So, I mean, I do stupid things still because I'm humid. I'm distracted. I have, you know, maybe I have a, didn't get enough sleep. I don't know. You know, there there is no perfection in this game. There, yeah. there just isn't. Like I've been trying the one minute chart the, in the past uh, week and a half because I'm usually trading on the 15 minute, half hour, one hour on the strat. So sure. I just wanted to try the one minute. Yeah. And I, I'm put my, I put my um, risk super low, like 20 bucks. So it's like, you know, it's, 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 it doesn't um, it doesn't psychologically impact me. Right. But I'm just, the ads, it's it's just like, I think what, I think what Kevin was saying on... Um, in one of these rooms, either the strat room or here, it's just, it's hard. Like every time I'm adding, I'm getting snuffed. So my first ad would have been, let's see, 802 Pacific. So that would be 1102 on the one minute. Let's see. I'm already in on the trade. And yeah, I'm, I'm like, I don't know what I, I don't know what I did. So did you maybe, <laughs> add, well, and that's okay. I mean, it, it was that's on okay. a higher high, right? It was on a higher two. I saw two in it. I saw it basing over the nine. There's two inside candles and, um, and yeah, I'm looking at, it's going with say a rising or a size. So, and and it, it, I think, it, yeah, and 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 we and we wop is right there at the base. You don't have it on. Oh, your, VWAP, I can throw it up there, yeah. Yeah, and it's like is basing right there. So I I added right at that point. So oh, that's not what yeah, I and Oops. and then uh, I subsequently it, and it, and then it TTO'd me on my add out. But then I still had my my sh my my original position from before. Because so I'm trying like different. I'm just trying like different tiers. Sure. I don't mm -hmm. want to get snuffed out because um, I'm still trying to figure out the ads properly. So I mean, yeah, obviously not the greatest place for an ad in retrospect because it did TT like you know like three candles later it took me out. Right. And you, you can tell where my you can tell and I gave it a little bit more room. Sure. But still took me out and then it then it went so that was uh, i mean that would have been a, the perfect ad is after the tto i think that's what you're yeah you're seeing. yeah what i'm saying because the difficulty is um with adding is with options in particular if if you're trading equity it doesn't matter nearly as much with options though these ttos can take away half your money in like two seconds Yes. So the proper way to add and have your the continuity of your trade and still stay profitable is you have to do it after price got slammed on an option. And and we'll look at an options chart in a second, but 
you can guarantee that if you have a call and price starts going down, the price of that call is going to fall pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. So how do I prevent myself from getting on a falling knife? And the answer is that this is how you do it. Now, there are times where it doesn't work perfectly. And, you know, let's say that initially it starts going up and then it just turns around and goes back down against you. That'll happen. However, the thing you have to remember is that if we're in a strong market and the trend is fairly strong, we don't have an increase in VXX or the volatility index. It's not typical for a trending stock just to turn around and boom, fly against you, unless there's some, you know, like when Trump used to tweet and something wonky would happen and stocks would fly up. You know, there's some reason that would force it to. Otherwise, it's just market makers trying to make you stop out because they're trying to get the weak hands. So... That can be a little trickier, but nine times out of 10, if you do it this type of way, you're, you're gonna be okay. You know, mm -hmm. you won't end up, cause I used to try to predict, okay, this is the last pullback candle and then I'd pull the trigger and the next one's red and then I'm immediately in the red doing the exact opposite of what I intended to do. And that's when I said, well, why wouldn't I just wait for a strat signal after the pullback to tell me I'm going back the right way? And so that's how I use the strat to add. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I like I like a retracement, like a pullback and then mm -hmm. an add. Um, just just going through the strat, I think the, the inside candles, you know, get the glimmer of my eye with, you know, like a, a very, what do you call it? If it's a very small or a narrow inside candle then that's a great at risk to, re to reward yeah add, right oh, yeah mm -hmm. and if it works it it's gold but um i think today <laughs> i think i had four ads on facebook and they all failed on me um i mean i i, I think i can read the, the trend better but you know again i'm i'm more of a hard time frame trader but I'm trying the one minute and uh but yeah just uh but yeah i think i'll i'll keep that in mind yeah keep yeah. so keep your you know what are, you like to trade what what time frame did you say the hourly or? um usually the hour or the five or the 10 or, or the 15. yeah um i mean i'll use i'll use the hour and um i typically like to see like a, a level gained mm -hmm. on our chart and then that gives me a little bit of confidence that um it broke a range sure um yeah and then yeah so yeah and this this type of you know trading on the one minute you you, you have to in my opinion you got to keep drawing those trend lines yeah i mean you can see them but for me personally i i just like to draw it i like to have it there because i'm visual and it just reconnects my brain to the price action on the chart so i think it's when i got in and when i added i didn't have the benefit of that trend line yeah hey, just a question did you sure. have any moving averages on your chart at all to keep you in the trend maybe i did i had you know the nine and the 20 emas <laughs> so I'm, I'm above both i have two inside candles above wewap and um I'm thinking that it's going to break and I I'm reading the trend and it's going to break that, that range, like, you know, the three candles prior that, that range, the high in the one minute, I think it's just going to, it's going to break that and, and test them, test the high from back to, what is it? 948 Eastern time. So I thought that's, that was my read on the trend. Oh, and, so you felt like it was gonna fall back way down? It again? was gonna, it was gonna, it was gonna, oh, it was gonna kick out the high of like 267. That was my read just based on this trend up. Um, of course, I, because the, I'm, I don't, I haven't traded the one minute chart in a long time because I, I usually, it's too noisy for me. Yes. Um, and I just have to adjust. And I, I've had actually fairly good success, but, you know, today it was a little, a bit of a, a, a I got school little, but uh, it's all good. And yeah. I feel like if you would have maybe looked at the five minute chart, like those MAs would have definitely kept you in the trade. 
but the yeah. one minute like you said could be too noisy that's what i found at least they don't always work well out that it's, clean. it it seems like it's too noisy if you're not used to it and i get that but remember what is a trend right and so for sure, and, and a lot of times for me, if I make my entry on the one, and I like to do that with options because I'm getting a really precise entry with a very tight stop. But if that chart is too noisy for you, then after you make your entry, take the dang one minute chart off and go back to your five, like you said, and just ride that 21 EMA all the way up, you're good to go. Yeah, I, th I think for me with my one minute, one minute ads is my, my stops were tight and they were on one minute inside bars and they just got taken out yeah and and I, I gave it a little space as well i mean my my stops aren't at say the two closes under the 21 mine are my ads are where did i where was my um inside candle or my say pivot right or yeah, my tto right little, yeah let, let's go through the ads real quick because on the ads that I'm looking at that I would have taken, I'd, I wouldn't have gotten stopped out. So I want to make sure I, why is this not turning back on? I'm just, I like the yellow candles. It doesn't want to, they just disappeared for some reason on your turkeys. Anyway, I can see them. So, um, all right, so let's go back to this. So the TTO entries that I see, one is here. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful, when you see a little itty bitty candle right on the 20, yeah. boy, that is, that is your ideal sweet spot entry because you can have such a tight stop. In fact, with yes. these types of setups, I put my stop right here below that little itty bitty candle. That's exactly where I got stopped on my ad. <laughs> so oh, so, so your, your stop must've been like floating below. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, of course I had slippage, but my, like my, my entry was three was it three candles earlier on the higher high off the inside candle right? oh one more over this guy to the left yeah 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 see and that's where um i i can see how that would have happened but you probably yeah. weren't close enough to and that's that's yeah. where this 21 ema can be real helpful because i'm mm -hmm. very diligent about waiting and if it doesn't give me that entry then I ain't trading it. I'm not adding there. Yeah, you I was hugging I mean? the nine and I was above Weebop. So yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's yeah, the 21 really definitely worked here. It it, it sure. doesn't just work here. I'm telling you, this is how I trade and I'm a profitable trader. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. it works. Are there times when it doesn't work? Sure. Because is there anything that works 100% of the time in trading? Nope. I wish there was, not. but there's just yeah, not. yeah. Slam me up for that one. Too. I know. I I spent. I wasted so much time looking for it. Time I can't get back, you know. And it just doesn't exist. You need a simple set of rules that you can follow consistently every single day and and trade the same every single day. And what are my rules? So you, you, mm -hmm. Yeah. So my rules are: I'm gonna wait for trend to establish itself. What is a trend? Uptrend is a low, a high, a higher low, a higher high. TTO back to the 21 EMA strat signal, I'm in. I'm basing my targets nine times out of 10 right off the daily where I think it can go. If it keeps running, I adjust that up by looking left on the daily. And the opposite is true for a downtrend. I want a definitive high, low, lower high, lower low, TTO back to trend, I'm in take my target off the daily. That's how I stay very consistent and keep my stops tight. My stops always go under that candle on the one minute. And if I'm anxious, then I will switch over to the five minute to watch it and I also keep an eye on the daily. And- so, so daily is where you take profit off magnitude on the daily. Yes, yeah, I'm usually looking at the daily to, to you know, unless it's like some little intraday scalp and I can look I'm trying to think there was a trade I took the other day. I'll have to pay more. If it's an intraday, it's on something where there's like a clear intraday pivot machine gun something. I'll try to be more cognizant of.